Oh, good morning. It's not really what I call morning anymore because it's 10.30 in the morning. Hmm. It's 10.30 in the morning, but it's not morning. All right, technically I suppose it's morning. Just got up. Worked late last night. Theater gig. Playing a lot of Cards Against Humanity, which may or may not crop up in future podcast because after playing Cards Against Humanity for three days, I have a bunch of the cards stuck in my brain. For example, a super soaker full of cat piss, or fucking a dead corpse back to life, and of course, one of my personal favorites, picking up girls at the abortion clinic. The perfect trifecta, there's that one black card in there, the blank plus blank equals blank. If I could just have the cards in my hand to play incest plus picking up girls at the abortion clinic equals fucking a dead corpse back to life, that would be, that would be great. That would be great, okay? So I'm really asleep right now and just started drinking coffee, so have low expectations, but I'm going to keep this short. <laughs> well, you've heard that fucking lie before, haven't you? At the theater, we were discussing assorted things, like fucking dead corpses, and incest, and picking up girls at abortion clinics. Oh, and queefing! Apparently there were a number of adults at the theater, <clears throat> pardon me, to include some women who did not know what the word queefing means, so I got to explain what queefing means, because I'm the go-to person for learning new terminology. I also learned a new word, thanks to... Cards Against Humanity. There we go. See, I knew it was in my brain somewhere. Slam something, and, but now I can't remember what the word is. I'm pissed off. It was, it was another word for sorority girls that you just have sex with. Well, wait. Sorority girls that you have sex with. Sorority girls that you pump and dump. I said it in the right order that time. I always say dump and pump. Anyway. I learned a new word, but promptly forgot it. Because I'm tired. Because it was a late night striking a show that had three semi-trucks to load. Not that I had to do too much work, because as I talked about in a previous podcast, I'm an old dog, and old dogs get wiser. Alright, none of that is what I'm supposed to be talking about. Three minutes of what I'm not supposed to be talking about. Yes, this will be short. I also started watching American Horror Story. We'll talk about that in the future. What am I supposed to be talking about? Here's what I'm supposed to be talking about. We were having a discussion about drinking and driving and why is it that given current technology, why isn't that some sort of device, whatever it is, in an automobile that determines if the driver is intoxicated, whether it be alcohol or you know, whether it be marijuana, whether it be whatever. Why is there not some kind of device in every automobile, standard, that determines if the driver is impaired and not capable of driving, and they would shut the vehicle down? So, of course, my first answer to that was just to throw out my usual thing, which is, well, if you put a breathalyzer in every car, I'll be able to make a lot of money in downtown Fort Collins on Friday and Saturday night, charging people $10 to blow into their breathalyzer for them. Now, of course, somebody, one of the guys in the discussion, made a good point, though. He says, yeah, but with DNA testing, if there's a way that, so let's say I blow into the breathalyzer on somebody's car, and they're drunk. So then they get in the car, and they drive, and they have an accident. The cops are going to come in, and they're going to swab the breathalyzer device for DNA samples. They're probably going to find some, maybe not in every single case, but they would probably find some. And then, of course, the person who breathed into the breathalyzer for the drunk person would be hunted down and put in prison. So there's a flaw in my plan right there. I had not thought of that. This is why it's good to have discussions with other intelligent people. 
And theater techies, theater, there's a lot of theater techies that are just stupid and a waste of protoplasm. But there are some theater techies who are pretty fucking smart, and I wouldn't dare call any of them anarcho-capitalist. But there are some theater techies that, if prodded in the right direction, could easily become anarcho-capitalist. And are capable of thinking. As we'll see in a minute. So anyway, then I said, okay, that's, yeah, that's, you know, a good point, and I'm thinking about how to get around that. But then I said, you do know the real reason why these devices aren't installed in automobiles, right? And they're like, well, no. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be really fucking cynical. And they're like, yeah, whatever. I said, this is going to be the truth. Okay, yeah, whatever. And I said to them, the reason you don't have a device in an automobile that prevents people from driving drunk is because... And I've, this is not what the podcast is about, because I've talked about this in great, great depth you know, on stating the obvious in the past. The reason it's not illegal... Either, the, re, wait, let me, bleh, the reason they don't have devices on automobiles to keep people from driving drunk is because driving drunk is a huge source of revenue. The DUI industrial complex makes a shit ton of money. Right, it's the, this is, like I said, I've talked about this in depth. It's just like the other thing I've talked about in depth is how feminists want women to be raped because women getting raped is what gives feminist power and it's how they make their money, right? If women are not being raped, then you don't need feminism. It's the same thing with driving drunk. There's this whole, here I'm talking about what I said I'm not gonna talk about. There's this whole industrial complex built up around DUIs, right? You get arrested, so you've got to, you have to buy the equipment to test people to see if they're drunk. It's a way for the police departments to make revenue. It's a way for the court system to make revenue because you have to go to court. You have to pay filing fees and all this other stuff. You've got all these counselors and DUI teachers or whatever. You know, you have to go to these classes because you were driving drunk and the teacher like stands there and says, don't drive drunk. I mean, because they all of this stuff makes money. You gotta have the little ankle bracelets. I mean, all of this shit makes a shit ton of money for people. And especially, like, can you imagine the people who teach the classes you have to go to after you get caught driving drunk? I mean, these are people who are teaching a class which is basically to tell you you shouldn't drive your car when you're drunk. I mean, that's their skill set. How would somebody like that actually find a job in a free market where you have to actually produce something, right? So all of these people in this complex, this DUI industrial complex, these are all people who can't get a job because they have no skills. So the DUI complex is basically a big welfare system for these people. So one of the people in the conversation says to me, well, no, that's not true, because that's the broken window fallacy. You're not actually creating any wealth. And I paused and was grateful for the fact that I was having a conversation with somebody who is aware of the broken window fallacy and understands it, because most of you out there aren't, most of you out there don't. And this was a really good point, because I get to have so few conversations with intelligent people that when it happens... I usually learn something. And so this stopped me for a second and I had to process this. And I said, yeah, okay, you're right. It is the broken window fallacy. And it's like, okay, wait, there's, there's a flaw in my thinking here and I have to do something with this. And so I thought a few minutes and this conversation kind of went and I was over here thinking by myself. And then I resolved it and I said, ah, because this is, this is where it clicked. And this is what the podcast is about now that we're 10 minutes into the podcast. As I pointed out to this other guy, yes, the DUI industrial complex is the broken window fallacy. The prison industrial complex is the broken window fallacy. The military industrial complex, it is the broken window fallacy. He, he was absolutely correct about that. The broken window fallacy is only a fallacy if you're not the person who repairs broken windows. And yes, the DUI industrial complex 
is the broken window fallacy. It doesn't generate wealth. It doesn't create value. It takes money away that could be used for other things. That is 100% true. Unless you're a member of the DUI industrial complex. In which case, it's not a fallacy anymore. It's the way you make your living. It's the only way you can make your living, right? With the broken window fallacy, if the person who, if the company that replaces broken windows doesn't have any broken windows to replace, they go out of business. That's why they want broken windows. If feminists don't have women getting raped, then feminists don't have a reason to exist, and feminists have to go get a real job. If people who teach DUI classes to people who got caught driving drunk don't have people getting caught driving drunk, they have to go get real jobs that actually create value. So yes, it is. It absolutely is the broken window fallacy. But the point of today's podcast is that the broken window fallacy is not a fallacy if you're the person who replaces the broken windows.